Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolays at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 and we have another tournament. It's been a while, but we are finally back with at least one tournament. This is going to be a Swiss into single elimination tournament, so the first, first bit of this is going to be a Swiss bracket, which is going to be on a series of maps, of course, because that's how it works. And then it is going to be a single limb bracket afterwards. Once the Swiss bracket is done, the highest players, it's like the top, everyone above third place or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how that works. But anyway, once that is set up, then we will have... We will have the tournament going. So we have Lamadeus and Captain Klutz, Guy Up Diamond Friend, Exploit Google Frog, and Magman and Ikins. Those are our players for the first For the first round of the tournament, we will be starting with Guy Up and Dime Freund. That'll be on Cold Snap. That is the first map for this tournament for the round uh, the first round of the Swiss round. Swiss pool. Sorry, it's a lot of rounds involved. Many things are round here. Very few sharp corners. So at this point we have yeah, so like it's each each round has its own map. Cold Snap is the first one, and then Doom Patrol will be round two, and then we go from there. So we are gonna be getting into the map in just a moment. We have A lot of setup going on in the background. Alright, so we are in. You're in. Dying Front and Guy Up are set up. Guy Up is over, presumably on the right side of the map. Dying Front will be on the west side of the map. And this is Cold Snap. I haven't shown this map in a long time. It is a fairly large map with a rather iconic setup. It's basically the DSD setup, where you have a low flat section and then a bunch of higher middle sections. Of course, given the size of the map and the shape of the map, you do have a general three-lane approach. And Dime Front starting in the northwest side of the map, which is a little unusual. Normally, players will start over in the center or southwest, just because there's more resources available there. And we do see Guy Up is starting in the center. They're not clearly sure where Dime Friend's going to be, but want to make sure they aren't screwed over by anything. And Dime Friend, on the other hand, wants to stick to that northwest side of the map. Make sure that that is theirs. Starting at the Shieldbot Factory, well, Guy Up goes for the Hovercraft Factory, the ever-popular Hovercraft Factory, especially nowadays. Even with the Dagger Nurse, the Hovercrafts have remained quite popular in the current meta. So at this point... I would say that Dime Friend is going to have a slight defensive advantage, and the fact that they're going shields in the center of the map. As long as they maintain constant increase in territory, they should be fine. Just because from where they are now, they can easily set up a situation where it's impenetrable to get to their main base, and they just keep getting choke point, and then another choke point. And not much is going to be giving the hovercraft some major speed advantage, because they have to go uphill. And that, as you can see right now with the dagger, does not work out all that well. Dime Friend getting first blood right off the bat. Guy Up, on the other hand, is probably not too concerned. They do have the advantage of being in a position where territory is going to be extremely easy to gather. I mean, the entire southeast side is theirs. They have no worries whatsoever. So, Guy Up is going to be in a very strong position going forward. Dime Friend, if they can take the western side of the map, they're going to have, obviously, all that metal, but that's going to be difficult to defend. So I think they're going to focus more on the north side, where it's going to be harder for Guy Up's hovercrafts to get in and deal with them. And I mean, at this point, Dime Freight does have an advantage of static metal. Largely because Guy Up has been focusing a lot more on their military than they have on their economy. So this could backfire in a moment, but Dime Freight we see already going for the choke points. And that is... Sorry, I just realized I... Might not have put enough delay on. Just occurred to me. 
Actually, it also occurred to me that I don't remember how to do it in this. OBS Studio changed some stuff, and I honestly don't remember how you even set up Stream Delay. Well, that's... Unfortunate... Do I even have that option? I don't think I have that option anymore, actually. That's weird. I should have that option somewhere. Anyhow, that's a little unfortunate, but kind of irrelevant right now. As I was saying... Right now, time for me to head economically. Guy, I'm kind of ahead militarily. Although, I say that, yet... At this point, Dying Friend has taken a lot more metal. Like, they've done a lot more damage than Guy Up has. Losing a little... Losing one or two bandits here or there on their raids, but... That's not that bad, all things considered. Oh, why did that bandit move over? No! That bandit had a free shot at the metal extractor. I don't know if Dying Friend was paying attention to that. They might have been going for the metal extractor, but... Had a free shot of the metal extractor. Sorry, the they might have been going for the lotus, but the metal extractor was covering from the lotus. I don't know what happened there. At any rate, Gaiop is actually having a bit of a harder time than I expected maintaining the territory. They will be able to build that up over time. I mean, this is probably the only time where Diamond actually will have an economic advantage. This game, they're working on it. They're getting a lot of expansion to the southwest, but the maintenance is still going to be the problem. Like, that is still the key issue. Even then, though, bandits coming through here from Dimefriend do have a lot of very juicy targets to work with. So I don't really see what that is going to be other than a couple of dead metal extractors. And if Dimefriend is careful about this, then I will try to be careful about it, but the Lotus is too close. This Lotus is far enough away that the metal extractor could block line of sight, but I guess... My guess is actually the bandit was not on hold position, so it ended up just deciding on its own to go after the Lotus. Which is, of course, a dire mistake. So, bit of a shame that. But, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. That's why state toggles are important, although it's also one of the reasons why state toggles can be a pain in the butt sometimes. At any rate, Dive Friend still ahead! Actually, managing to get most of the western side of the map, managing to get rid of a lot of Gaiop's military to the point that I mean, Dimefront has taken almost twice as much of metal away from Gaiop as Gaiop has from Dimefront. And I don't see any critical masses of daggers right now. I mean, these three or four here could probably deal with the bandits without as many issues, but now Dimefront has moved over. They've switched over to a Thug Law Ball. They're not, and with rogues as well. They're not going to be so worried about getting their bandits into position, and their bandits are still doing a lot of work. He almost... Well, half a dozen going over to the northeast side of the map, that's not going to find much as Gaiop has not expanded there, but that's still enough bandits they can just swoop down, swoop south over here and take care of a bunch of this expansion, at the same time another four on the south side of the map, so these expansions are going to be completely wiped out. There's almost no chance of anything recovering from this. I mean, the bandits even having a chance to turn around get rid of the daggers without taking much damage, only one of them being harmed at all and forcing all these offenses to be built. I mean, two Lotus in the south side of the map for four bandits is a little excessive. I mean, it's necessary, but consider that that could have been more scalpels. And, or could have been this particular quilt going and getting more expansions faster. Like, Dime Friend is still in a very strong position just because of how their bandits are being used and how they're managing to maintain that military advantage. It's becoming a bit less pronounced now. Gaia is only 300 metal behind and that's not as huge of a deal. Diamond's economic advantage is the bigger question right now. But even then, that... Wow, that bandit actually doing a great job paying for itself. If that can kill... Oh, if that bandit can kill the quill. That's the biggest thing. And that quill is coming in. Guy is pulling that quill into position, so the bandit should be able to take out that quill, which will pretty much stunt Guy Up's entire expansion efforts to the southeast side of the map. And yeah, the bandit's gonna go down right now. But it did its job. It more than did his job. Guy up with a center expansion trying to basically establish a proxy firebase. Trying to cut off the center pass. Not a terrible idea, on all things considered. The only downside is that's basically leaving Dimefriend open to build up the rest of the map. Well, Guy up, despite their somewhat advantageous position right off the bat, they are not doing so. Like they're not taking advantage of their own position. They're having to build defenses far more often. Oh, and Ivan 
questioning if Dying Friend is going to use the Gauss Bounce trick in order to hit the Stinger from far away, which they probably will. Looks like it's in enough position. To it's in enough of a position to be able to deal with that, so it shouldn't be a problem. Why do I have? Oh. So yeah, Dying Friend should be able to take care of that, and indeed, that's exactly what's happening. The Stinger is being taken out by a Gauss Bounce. And Ivan D is thoroughly satisfied. And at this point, though, it looks like... Oh! Oh, Gaia, cleverly enough, basically turning that around. Managing to hit the Gauss a little bit by luck, but still managing to do it before the Stinger gets killed. And the Stinger might not even die! There's enough repair going on. No, never mind, there's not enough repair going on. The Gauss, however, is going to go down after taking care of the Stinger, and the Scalpels might be able to take care of Dying Front's commander. If that happens, then this could be all for naught as the Stinger will be rebuilt, and indeed Dying Front's commander goes down, not even able to dig a hole for themselves, which, I mean, that's what they're trying to do. That's what you always do with your commander. Didn't even manage that, and that opens up a world for Gaiop to counter-assault and basically make up for all the damage they've taken thus far, getting rid of all of Dying Front's southern economy, and possibly just walking into their base. There isn't much. Dying Front has been almost entirely dependent on their bandits providing distraction. They've barely built up any defenses. And this attack over here to the northeast is the only thing Dying Front has to keep them in this round. Otherwise, they're going to be going 0-1 at the start. Remember, this is Swiss, by the way, so they're not eliminated. They just have a lower score. So it's harder for them to get into the top however many. It's harder than for them to get into the final elimination bracket because right now they are on the ropes. However, Gaia did not go over the south side. They went from the north first, and that could be a mistake. Basically going all or nothing. If they manage to pull this off, of course, they'll win. Gaia will take it. But if Gaia doesn't pull this off, especially with a counterattack, that that would spell doom. And I think Dying Front, with that counterattack coming in here, that's pretty much cracked things open. The mace won't have a chance to be able to get rid of all the thugs and outlaws quickly enough before all the, before the bandits take care of everything over to the south. Get rid of the caretakers. Get possibly get rid of the hovercraft factory. In, they will get rid of the hovercraft factory. There's nothing stopping them there. The mazes are doing their best, but the outlaws are close enough stopping the mace from dealing any meaningful damage. And that hovercraft platform is gone. At the same time, we have over the western side of the map, Gaiop's army getting torn to shreds, trying to attack into Dimethorn's main base. And Dying Front's other economy, while not really well defended, is completely untouched. I'm not sure what Gaiop has to deal with this, but it's not going to be a whole lot. And indeed, Gaiop throwing in the towel. Dying Front goes 1-0 in the first match of this tournament. So we see right now, I mean, Metal Used was actually way in favor of Dying Front. Everything was in favor of Dying Front. The excess was also in favor of Dying Front, I suppose. Unit value on top of that also. It's like everything's just... Everything went Dying Front's way that game. There wasn't a whole lot that they had against them. The main issue, I think, was just... The Hovercraft Factory is not a great choice here. Like, it's not an option that really gets you... On a map like this, a whole lot of advantage. I can see why Gaia built where they did, it's just they didn't take advantage of their opportunity, because they could have easily built up here, applied pressure on the south side of the map to keep Dying Frame from continuing to build up there, which is what I thought they were going to do. And then this entire area is essentially free. Like Gaia has a much easier time defending this than Dying Frame has attacking it, and Dying Frame has a much harder time defending the southwest than Gaia has attacking the southwest. So I'm not sure why Gaia went for a center fire base. If they were playing shields as well, that would make a lot more sense, but playing Hovercraft, I don't understand. Anyhow, that was that, so... Looks like we are gonna see... Well, I guess we're not gonna see much for a little while. I believe all the other games are in progress. But yeah, congratulations, Dying Friend, right off the bat. And for now, we will take a short break. I'll be back once the next match starts, so stay tuned. Back in just a couple minutes.